Hello, welcome back to chapter eight, so, excuse me, chapter six. I'm in chapter eight in my other class. Section four, factoring polynomials. We're doing the guided practice problems that come before the homework, and I'm gonna do problems 10 through 15. This is where we're going to practice our sum and differences of cubes. I had this on the previous sheet, but I just rewrote it here so that we remember what, what it was, okay? So here's the steps. Always check to see if you have a greatest common factor. The clue, here's my perfect cubes. See that eight? There's that eight again. That's a perfect cube, so probably I don't have to do anything here. Just use my difference which formula right here. Over here I got two and 54. Those are not perfect cubes, so I probably have a common factor. That's gonna be my clue, but either way, even if you don't catch that clue, check for a common factor. Then decide if you've got a difference or a sum. Figure out what the cube roots are. So the cube root of eight is two. So that means two to the third power is eight. So I'm gonna use the two. And if I got exponents, well, my variables, then I gotta kinda figure out what the cube root of that is also, all right? But that's okay, we'll get through all that. And then just follow the pattern. So let's take care of this one. This two to the third power gives me my eight, that's that. But what about this? If I have m to the second power and then I cube it, I end up with m to the sixth power. So what am I going to use? I'm gonna use my two and I'm gonna use the m to the second power. So my pattern here, I'm gonna subtract. So that's this one. So I have, I don't have room here. Two subtract m to the second power. Then I take that first part and I square it. Two squared is four. I add these two things multiplied by each other. 2 times m squared. And then I take the second thing, in this case represented by the b, that's why we use a and b, so we stop saying thing, m to the second power, and I'm going to square it, that's going to be m to the fourth power. And that's it. Let's look at problem number 11. Like I showed you at the beginning, I have a common factor here. My common factor is 2t to the fourth power. That leaves t to the third power plus 27. What about 27? That's on my list. So this tells me that t to the third power equals t to the third power, obviously, and three to the third power gives me 27. So I'm gonna be using t and three instead of a and b. I just follow the pattern. Don't forget the common factor. So I have two t to the fourth, that's a common factor. t plus three, that t plus that three, times t squared, subtract three times t, plus three to the second power, which is nine. And that's all you have to do for that one. Da, 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 da. Grab my other paper here. All right, number 12, 64 I recognize as a perfect cube. It's four to the third power. I don't think I'm gonna have, and actually I'm just glancing at all these. No GCF here, no GCF here, no GCF here. I do, I'm gonna get a GCF here, okay? It's kind of obvious this one sticks out because I see perfect cubes, perfect cubes, perfect cubes. These are not perfect cubes, all right? So I'll probably have a GCF here. In this problem, x cubed plus 64, I've got my x to the third power, which gives me my x cubed, and I've got my four to the third power, which gives me the 64. So I'm gonna be using x and four. Since it's a sum, here it is again, here's the sum. I have x plus four times x squared Subtract 4x plus 16. Where'd the 16 come from? It's 4 squared. And that's it. 
27 plus x cubed. I like it to be in best form, so I'm going to turn it around to x cubed plus 27. I'll get the same thing no matter what. And actually, to be honest, when you do this, if you're going to do it on the homework, just leave it. Because when you check the homework against the solution key later, Dr. Berger's not going to turn around. So, or if you do, just realize that you had turned around so things are going to be different. Remember when I did that in the previous video. Okay, but I like to do this because it's actually the way you're going to see it. I have x to the third power. That gives me my x to the third power, obviously. And this is 3 to the third power. So I'm going to be using x and 3. x plus 3 times x squared subtract 3x plus 9. And you know what? After a while, you're going to you're going to learn the pattern. It's going to become second nature to you. Cuz it's this thing squared subtract both of them multiplied and then that thing squared for this part. Number 14 is where I have my GCF. What is my GCF? It looks like my GCF is going to be 4t to the second power. That leaves t I, I don't like it when they use t. Mine mine look like plus signs. That's why I have to put a little tail on it t to the third power subtract 8. There's another 8. And 2 to the third power gives me my 8. So I get my GCF, don't lose it, t subtract 2, that's that t subtract that 2, t squared plus 2 times t plus 2 squared, which is 4. And number 15, no GCF. Should always check it. Y to the third power gives me my Y to the third power, obviously. And 5 to the third power, finally something other than 8, gives me my 125. Where's my list? It's right there. Have you noticed that I have not used any of these at all? They may show up in your homework. So, this is difference, so I get y subtract 5, <coughs> excuse me, times y to the second power, plus 5 times y, that's that 5 times that y, plus 5 squared, which is 25. Alright, we'll see you in the next video.